Leafs Converts, Hockey World. What is up? This is the Leafs Convo Podcast. My name is Norman James. How are you listening to us? Podcast Addict, Breaker, Podbean, Overcast, YouTube. However you're listening, thank you very much. You're doing a great job. Keep on doing it. Mike Augello is standing by in Etobicoke. He's following the Maple Leafs and those positional battles, as well as those who've been banged up in hockey battle. I'm ready to go. I know you're ready to go. Mike is raring to lay some information on us, so let's pod. The Leafs Convo starts right now. And here's Mike Agello inside of MasterCard Center. Michael, what's going on there? Good afternoon, Norman. Uh, the connection is much better than the last time. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's uh, some happenings here. Uh, some I, I just posted a new uh, article on Hockey Buzz regarding some of the uh, training camp battles that are that are ongoing here. And uh, uh, I think after the back-to-back home and home with the Buffalo Sabers uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, you're going to see another significant cut, cut down from 46 players, probably down into, the, I think, into the 30s. And then Babcock will really get, Mike Babcock will really get into the battle for positioning for, you know, fourth line, center, winger, for bottom pairing defense and the backup goaltender battle. Speaking of, Mike, can we expect Garrett Sparks and Curtis McElhaney to be battling for that backup spot, potentially right to the final day of the preseason? Yeah, I think it's going to go down to the final cut, and I, you know, I believe the final preseason game is the 28th of September, and the first game of the regular season is October 3rd. About September 30th or October 1st, you're going to have that cut down to 23 men, and you know, from all indication, I, I had, I had, you know, said po- there was a possibility that they would go with three goaltenders, but it sounds like they're going to go, they're only going to go with two. And if that's the case, then either McElhaney or Sparks will get placed on waivers unless somebody gets hurt in between now and then. It's Norman James along with Mike Agello. I'm at home in London, Ontario doing nothing. Mike is doing the bulk of just about everything for everyone inside MasterCard Center following the Maple Leafs training camp slash practice slash cut slash goal, backup goaltender battles. Um, the win over Ottawa in Ottawa, a two in a row, a preseason, but a chance for Austin Matthews to score. Tyler Ennis gets a pair. Uh, are we pretty sure, considering the contract he signed and what we've expected, uh, what we expect from him, that he's going to be a part of this roster? I, I think so. Um, I mean, obviously, he's playing a position that he's not going to play in, in the regular season, uh, playing on the line with Matthews and and uh, Patrick Marlowe, but the whole point of, I think, placing him in that position is the fact that he has been a top six forward in the past before injuries really hurt his career. And, you know, when players do get injured, you're going to need players on the fourth line, on the third line to be able to jump up and play in those top six roles. So, you know, yesterday was a good indicator that he gelled well with Matthews and Marlowe and he scored a couple goals and he was integral to, uh, setting up Matthew's goal, the first goal. So I, I think, you know, I, I, I've always liked Tyler Ennis as a player and as a depth forward, I think, you know, as somebody who's versatile, who can play both wings, uh, I think he's probably going to make the team. And, you know, that's one less spot for a guy like Josh Levo or some of the Marlies players to earn. And that's going to be a really tight squeeze for the, uh, for the Leafs and for those players. I can imagine amongst Leafs fans, it will be a contentious issue, but Tyler Ennis, not a reclamation project, but his career right in that wheelhouse now where he still has the speed. He can be a support player. He has that veteran understanding um, in terms of pedigree in the NHL. I think he's perfectly suited for, for that position, Mike. And a guy like Josh Leva will just have to keep working his ass off in the AHL to, you know, uh, earn himself a spot when and if the time comes. Well, I don't know if, and that's the problem with a number of these players. And when I, I asked the question of Kyle Dubas at the opening of training camp last week, and I said, asked him whether, you know, waiver status was going to be a, you know, part of the decision making process. And he says, well, we're going to factor in everything. And when it comes to a guy like Josh Levo, he has to go through waivers to oh. get down to the, the Marley. So, you know, if they place him on waivers, he could very, very easily get claimed the same thing with Garrett Sparks, the same thing with Justin Hall. So, you know, those are going to be factors in who makes that 23 man roster. That's why, you know, either it's going to be 
a tr- you know a trade before the uh, before the beginning of the season, trading off one of your backup goaltenders, or you know maybe a mysterious injury. But uh, yeah, it's going to be tough for them to fit all the players that they want to fit on that roster, and they may have to make some tough decisions. If you think bringing in championship style players to create a better roster is tough. What about the augmentation and the completion of a championship style roster at the bottom end, the goaltending battle, the uh, filling out the bottom pairing of, for defensemen, uh, making sure you have the right pieces amongst your uh, bottom six. Um, that's not too easy, Mike. Last thing for you, Jeremy Brockwell scored a goal in Ottawa. Uh, Kyle Outridge has him at number four on his 10 prospects to watch inside the Leafs organization right now. Mm-hmm. Does Brocco have a year and a half in the AHL and um, expect to be a member of the Maple Leafs one year from now? Or is, you know, let's just wait and see what happens. Injuries, stuff like that. Maybe Jeremy Brocco joins the team in the second half because of an opportunity and just rips it up. I, I, I think that Jeremy Brocco is going to have a big year in the AHL. He's going to get a lot, lot more ice time. Now, you know, guys like Carl Grunstrom, um, you know, a few of the players who are sort of on the borderline in terms of making the team, you know, they're going to occupy top six roles with the Marlies. But I do think that Brocco, who, you know, scored it over a point per game pace late in the uh, regular season with the Marlies, is going to get that opportunity again. And if he takes advantage of it, then he does put himself on the radar. I was talking, I was talking with someone uh, at training camp in Niagara Falls about Brocco and, you know, essentially that, you know, he has – that skill level, you know, I don't know if you, it's fair to put him in that in the big three in terms of the skill level, but he does have elite skill and he has won a world junior, a Memorial cup. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he, and a Calder cup. He only played four games in the, uh, in the playoffs last year, but he was a part of that team. And, you know, that, that sort of championship pedigree is not something to sneeze at. So I, I think he's going to go down to the Marlies. He's going to get a bigger role. He's could probably score a ton of points because he has a lot of offensive gifts. And we've seen that in, in a couple of the scrimmages and we've seen that in the game uh, on Tuesday or excuse me, on Wednesday. So I, I think that, uh, you know, he's not going to make the team this year, but he will be on the radar if he has that big year in the AHL for next year. Any missing posters of William Nylander on the walls of the MasterCard <laughs> Center? None. Not, and nary a mention of William Nylander today. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Travis Dermott is still day-to-day with a shoulder. He did not skate today. Uh, Freddie Gauthier was injured uh, yesterday in the game against uh, Ottawa. Um, he only played, I think, less, a little less than 11 minutes. Mm. And uh, I, I think, you know, Power Lindholm played pretty well. And I think that sort of puts uh, Gauthier behind the eight ball when it comes to the fourth line center spot because I think he needs to be out there making an impression to be able to earn that spot. And if he's not out there, um, then more than likely it's going to be Lindholm to uh, win the fourth line center job. But we have six preseason games to go. I love it, Michael. Thanks for your work. Good luck down there. Have fun and uh, safe travels home. Thanks, Norman. Oh, that Mike Augello does such a great job. We're so happy to have him with the Leafs combo. He's living his dreams in a very, very, very minute way because he is associated with this podcast, but mostly, mainly, pretty much all because he's following his favorite team, the Maple Leafs, in the flesh as a full-fledged reporter. And the work he does is second to none. Thank a Mike God Jello near you, okay, folks? In terms of organizational depth, the Leafs might not have that Norris Trophy candidate-type defenseman, but they have an embarrassment of riches at every other position, and it's such a huge contrast to the way things used to be. Thank you so much for listening to this abbreviated edition of the Leafs Combo. We're going to do our best to keep the daily combos coming at you because we know you have such an insatiable appetite for Leafs content, commentary, and conversation. We're here to deliver. For Mike Ogello, I'm Norman James. We'll talk to you soon.